Hi, everyone, and welcome to A&B Horror Movies. I'm Aaron. I'm Ben. And we're very happy to be joined today by some of the masterminds behind the new Irish horror called Gateway. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Can't wait to chat with you about uh, your film. So let's see. We've got Niall Owens. You're the director, writer, and producer of the film. Niall, so awesome to yeah. have you. Thank you. We also have Jer Murphy. Jer, you were the lead cinematographer. Welcome. Yeah, well, the the only cinematographer. The only, okay, okay. <laughs> well, lead sounds really good, though. Okay, um, thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> and we also have John Ryan Howard. John, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Proud of me. And you, I should have mentioned, you play Jamie in the film. Um, one of the, yeah. uh, a very key character, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but let's jump right into it. Uh, ben, why don't you go first? What's your first question? Yeah. Um, I suppose it's how did it all come about, story and making the movie in the end? How did so. it come about? Um, so I had written a script for another uh, story that I was hoping to do, and that was kind of coming along. I had an actor, uh, a Scottish actor, who was interested in being in that, um, a chap by the name of Gary Lewis, who I had, I had worked with. He was in Gangs of New York and and uh, Billy Elliot and it looked like they might actually go ahead so I managed to get a location for this story which happened to be my neighbor's house and uh, now between this and that the that story never happened Gary was very busy I didn't have much money and so it just kind of it just didn't unfortunately didn't happen um, but I still had like I still had a small amount of money and I had the location so I, I wanted to do something and it was kind of a no or never so I was like okay I need to write something so I was speaking to a buddy of mine who's um, who works in Drug Squad, and he was telling me about grow houses, grow operations, and how they're they're set up and they can be set up in innocuous places like uh, rentals and attics, and you know uh, he was telling me stories about folks who would rent out a house to a couple, and within three hours they'd have set up a whole grow operation in the attic, and you know, and then they can dismantle the whole thing in no time. So I thought that sounded like a really interesting way to kind of get into a horror movie situation, whereby because the question is always like, why don't they leave? Any horror movie would they go into a dangerous location, just get out? That's the first thing I'm always thinking. Why can't they just get out? So I needed, I wanted a scenario where they, the location, they were actually, they needed, they needed it as much as it needed them in the, in a sense, and that they would take it to the very limit in terms of threat or danger before actually running away or leaving. So that's kind of, I liked that idea of this is a way to get them in. They really need the place. They're less likely to leave because of something strange, but then obviously it gets, it gets stranger. So that's kind of how it came together, really. Um, the sto story ways anyway, the, the writing process wasn't the most structured that I've ever done. Uh, but thankfully when it came to, you know, talking to Jer, he was uh, keen to do it. And then it just kind of, it went from there. Wicked. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's really nice. Um, ben and I were talking beforehand. It's it's a slow burn horror, but it's also a, a character study in many ways. Um, but then the horror elements start to come through and, and that was, was very well done. Um, Thank you. I have a sort of a, an easy question for all three of you um, from my perspective. So first of all, it's nice to see that you're all speaking to each other um, and on good terms. So I guess we're guessing things went well. Um, so since you played different roles, um, now you're the director, Jerry, the cinematography, John, you were an actor. How did you all work together and, and interact together um, to make this film? So go, like okay, I'll go first. Uh, sure, okay. Kyle. Why don't you go first? Okay. Uh, <laughs> but from my point of view, uh, it was like it was one of the one of the, the best experiences of of my life to date so far. Um, and like one of my goals going forward is that whatever I get to make next, I can have as much of the same crew, if not all of them, back. You know, get the band back together. Um, awesome. It was an incredibly positive experience for me. I mean, it had like any production has challenges. You know, but the thing. Is the skill comes from how you put your heads together to overcome those challenges. But other than that, the whole thing was, um, yeah, it's a very, 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 very happy uh, memory for me. Uh, and I can't, we put this, I'll sum up in a single sentence, actually. This is, this is easier. Um, Perfect. I can't imagine any job better than making a movie with your friends and just doing yeah, that's that. It's amazing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That was, for me, it was brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. How do you follow that up? 
John, yeah. you want to jump in? <laughs> sure. <laughs> that was a great, great experience uh, for me. I just, I loved every bit of being there. Like, um, and as I said, I'd say Niall differs in that he wasn't given, he wasn't really given me or anyone uh, kind of direct feedback after, but you knew he knew exactly what he wanted all the time. He'd ver- a very specific vision. Whereas, uh, but uh, so I'd get a bit of a uh, feedback from Jared at times, uh, which would be different from any experience I've had. So it was, it was just, uh, but a real harmonious, uh, you know, feeling on set all the time. It just, you know, there was no uh, pissing about or kind of egos or anything like that. Like, you know, just a That's great good. experience start to finish. Really. Yeah, taking on for what John was saying there about obviously, I'm quite. A communicator when it comes to actors, not about performance or anything like that. It's we're very strict on framing um, for a lot of our elements. And so I just be discussing with actors their space so they can act when it little stages for them to perform themselves. Uh, I think that's important because um, when you're working with people, you, you want all their energy has to be used. So there's no point when they run out of room and they're giving energy and you're not capturing it. So we're just trying to give them space that they were safe in, that they could really express themselves. Excellent. Well, it worked and it all came together very well. Cool. Yeah. It did, thankfully, yeah. I think we had a good plan. Like myself, between myself and Jur, um, we've Jur has shot pretty much everything I've made. And we're, we're, we're we'd be both very pragmatic in the sense that this is what we have and this is what we're attempting to do. And what's the best way of cutting our cloth to measure? You know, um, like Gateway, I can honestly say is exactly the film I envisioned in my head. Like I was very, I was so, so, um, what's the word? I don't know if proud is the word, but I was just so happy in the edit that I never had to pivot. I never had to recut a scene or rewrite a scene or change something to make the narrative work. It, it worked because of, I think a big part of that is how we plan to do it. And then mm-hmm. there is an element of that, the ethereal look. That it just, you know what I mean? It, co- it coalesced the right way. Um, so, yeah, no, we, we we were very planned. And then you're kind of giving over a little bit to hope, you know, just a little bit. It's not a mm-hmm. tactic, but you're giving over a little. Of course. I'm wondering, uh, I suppose this should have to be a question for, I suppose I could ask everyone, but it must have been a really fun sort of, movie to film as well because I've never seen a cast sort of I thought it was like solid together everybody was like just bounced off of everyone so like really good um even John's character is like you kind of wanted to hear something but you were like really mysterious and he's like but we're gonna get something from him later on and then you didn't and it it still <laughs> left you thinking it was really I love that whole aspect of like the whole group just sort of unwinding. It was really good. So it must have been fun for you to photograph and direct and work with it all. So that's kind of to all of you. Yeah, well, I'll go first. For me, it was 12, it was, we shot it, the initial principle of photography was 12 days straight. Isn't it 12 days? Not 12 days. Yeah, Uh, so so, um, I actually, Literally even um, made sure I stayed in my home in my village during the time because to give my space, an hour, I, I live an hour and a half from the location, essentially. But I needed... And he was on time every day, oh, yeah. if not but, early, <laughs> every day. It's just, it's just to have that space while you're actually awake to think about things because, you know, there, wa- there wasn't a lot of chance in this film. There wa- it, It's very well planned and then it's performances and capturing them. So... It was 12 days solid and I was just exhausted, to be honest. And um, I'm a bit of a tyrant when it comes to it. I just, um, I'm very, not dominant, but I'm very sure of what I'm up to. And I'd kind of push, not push people out of the way, but explain that we're going this direction to get it done, you know, so. <laughs> you could be heard. <laughs> well, no, well, like, yeah. I think what, what, one of the things that the testament to Jur is that he he's one of these People, which is why I love working with him. He's one of these people who speaks when he has something to say, but he doesn't stand there talking at you. Do you know what I mean? And I respect that massively because you know when he says something to listen and to consider what he's saying, you know? And, and that goes for a lot of the, that goes for all the cast and crew. I mean, they're, they're smart, talented people who understand what they're doing and 
they approach it the right way. And I think we got, again, there's an element of luck with that. But at the same time, we were smart because we'd worked with a lot of these folks before. So we just we were very careful in, in how we put this together. Um, yeah. Sorry, John, you can order. Sorry, I talked over somebody. Not sure. Go ahead, John. The question was really... <laughs> um, I know, I'm not sure the question really. Uh... <laughs> Well, I think, oh, what, what the, I think what uh, what's it called? Ben was asking was with regards to performance and kind of yeah. working, right? Working together. Or yeah, working in the in the, basically with everybody. It just seems like everybody glued together really well. And I think that's a kind of testament to just how uh, well Niall picked the team and just with like between Niall and Jared, the whole thing ran so smoothly. You know, it's like uh, Niall and Jared knew exactly what they wanted all the time, so there was no kind of confusion of anyone hanging around or you know anyone in the way it was just very uh, just the whole thing was very cohesive or whatever you know very the whole operation so smooth um mm -hmm. there's familiarity as well like familiarity is it, it helps when you know the folks you're working with you know you can especially if you know them as people but you've also worked with them and you know how they operate and then you can you can go in with a certain expectation of as to how they're going to uh, conduct themselves on set so to speak because yeah. again as a first AD a lot of the folks on the set I would have either directed or I would have worked with them as a first so I already knew what to expect like Stephanie Cavanagh the the makeup and hair designer like she's brilliant and I've worked with her on a good few productions and um, so I knew as soon as I was doing this that's who I wanted or Niall Craven who did the sound um, I'd worked with him on a couple of Irish TV shows and he wanted the chance to do a feature and I knew what he was like to work with which is brilliant which is exactly why you know i hired him um so yeah no it was and to be honest with you, the cast the cast are all extremely extremely talented capable performers and they listened to um what was asked of them they didn't always understand as john said i didn't give a lot of feedback but the um mainly because we went in with a certain idea which was less put it back yeah. do you know what i mean mm -hmm. yes yeah. restraint as opposed to getting outside yourself um, and I think that really lent itself to what I was attempting to do in terms of the aesthetic as well as the performance. Because you never see, like one of the things in the films, you never see anybody other than the cast. Even when they're out in the streets, you never see a car. There's no one you never else. See, yeah. There's no one else. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's part of, that leads into the performance, which is restrained as much as possible. And that way, when moments of, if you want to call it high energy happen, they stand out a little bit more. Yeah. I didn't mean to do a thumbs up just then. Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> but no, I was going to say, even like you're saying, the shots outside, I thought it was so sort of tightly filmed in a way that even the outdoor shots sort of filmed, feel claustrophobic, which was really yeah. good. It gave it that really good mm -hmm. uh, feel that you were the only sort of people there. And I just felt like, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Because I, I like, like claustrophobic sort of feel to that, say. But I think that that was important because we were we were trying to create this this vibe of something that's very grounded, but at the same time has a an odd an oddness to it, which is why like there are shots in it where I've painted out cars and I've painted out people and I've painted out elements of life. You know, I've taken them all out uh, because I wanted to kind of create this haunted landscape that mm -hmm. would tie in then with so many of the other things we had planned, i.e. in terms of how we were going to shoot it or the sound design uh, and the performance. So it was all one big canvas on which everything is there by design as opposed to happenstance. Yeah. Um, I would actually have called it in, in a term when I'm discussing with people, call it kind of magic realism. Just... Uh, because, you know, obviously very low budget and things like that, we weren't about to be closing down streets and everything. So anything we could use to give that tiny little tone to a scene, either through light, through character or through uh, in claustrophobia, we maybe had something in front of the lens uh, between you and the characters. So it seems almost you're grimly looking at them in a sense, you know, uh, yeah. There was always um, mm -hmm. trying to create this feeling, this just off real, just slightly off real. Yeah, the close-ups of some of the characters where you just see their eyes and then the, yeah. the, the sound, the score. Um, I, I don't know how more I can say how, how effective and, and nicely done it was. Um, I do have a, a question about the house because the house plays a major role in the film and is almost a character in itself. 
and Ben mentioned um, claustrophobic, the house seems very small. Were there challenges filming in such a small house with so many people and maybe some unexpected things that did, uh, did tensions rise being in a small room with so many folks? I don't think so. I think the only time, I think the only time tensions rose and he is going to <laughs> kill to me for saying it, but our, one of our, uh, one of our uh, directing assistants, Keen Casey, uh, Ace, he tripped, he tripped carrying a pack of filters <laughs> and he broke the filters. And I think that was the only time I saw Jer's exterior crack. But what was really impressive <laughs> is Jer got mad for a precise window of time of like 30 seconds. He got really angry. <laughs> And then he stopped being angry and just got on with it. It was, yeah. it was amazing. I'd never seen that before. <laughs> I, I, but I was angry at myself, you know, because um, here was a person who'd given up 12 days of their life for us. Do you know what I mean? And uh, they out. And they were doing a job that maybe, you know, otherwise would have liked someone who's, you know, who's training in that area to do it. And, and it was just, you know, just one of these accidents. And yeah, I nearly erupted, obviously, because... Uh, you just see 800 euros smash on the ground. Um, oh, but then, but then, um, you, but it's, the thing was, we were all working together. You were talking about the cast and crew all working together. And this is just one of those moments. So, you know, at first you go, oh, but then after that is just, you move on and you just realize that this person had been working their ass off to yeah. this, you know, whatever was the damage, they more, more, and then paid off for it in their yeah. own work, essentially. So I, I couldn't really argue with anything about that. And sorry, sorry, Ace. I just want to say sorry to when really he watches this back yeah. because he's going to be. <laughs> but um, go sorry, <laughs> go back to the question with regards to the house. It it was small, but it wasn't at the same time because what was actually really helpful is that. So the house is exact same as mine. My house is they're side by side and they're exact same houses. They're you know the architecture of reassurance. Um, but the the garage. Uh, on that side so basically the house had an extra room upstairs so it allowed for more space so it while being small thankfully it had enough depth in the right areas where we could set up a shot and kind of have it exist in, in two ways i.e in the sense of it being claustrophobic claustrophobic but at this without the without being on top of the actor in a jarring way if that makes sense do you know what I mean? Like close up, but not close up in the sense that, or tight, but not in the sense of where you're like, oh, this is an ugly frame and I feel like this wasn't thought through properly, you know? Um, yeah, sorry, Joe, you can speak better on that than I can. Well, I found the house really tiny and I hated the whole experience. No. <laughs> that's, what we're, that's what we're looking right? for. Okay. Uh, no, it, it's just, uh, well, now, obviously, as Niall was saying earlier on, we'd made a lot of short films together and the uh, when you keep on being brought into small <laughs> rooms with low ceilings, uh, for my job, it's like it's like they keep on just hitting you with a knife. Uh, you know, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher. But then it you go with it then because suddenly it's a character. And as I said, we're really into getting our rules and stuff in our subconscious dealing with it. So we were shooting. A lot of the time we wouldn't even shoot. But the camera wouldn't be in the room we were shooting. It would be outside, maybe clipping a door or something coming in. Uh, so we were really trying to extend the house as much as we could and make, in doing so, I think it really made the house a character that I think if we hadn't had to do that, it would just be like, you know, like a backdrop behind me. That would be it. Whereas opposed, we're in this space. And I think, uh, hopefully, I think the viewer really feels like they're in that space while we're, well, uh, during the film. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think so. So many keep ringing me. Sorry, <laughs> it's trying to stop it for it starts ringing. Um, <laughs> uh, this one's for John. Actually, your character—it must have been quite a cool character to play because it's like really mysterious. You see, you sort of see you whisper in someone's ear, and then that's it. You got like your long black face, like yeah, 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 character. And I was, I was kind of like. Is he going to do something like? Oh, are we going to see something really bad from him? But we, it was like you just played it really cool. It must have been a cool character to play. It was, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was like as uh, as Niall was describing at some if some early on stage, it's almost like some sort of weird, uh, ominous, um, uh, what was it what sort of uh, Amish looking character, like the costume, yeah. looking on I me, mean, the collarless shirt and everything else. 
But um, no, I love doing the parks. Like um, the only I said the scene on the bench with myself and the character Cyril Jimmy Smaller. Like Niall didn't want me blinking for the scene, and it's when, like the sky looked really cool because the sun was blazing and there was really <laughs> dark clouds appearing, and it was like then the sun just comes right down into my eyes, and I'm trying to not blink, and the sun is right into my eyes. It's like oh god, but um, no, I love it. Great job, John. <laughs> no, well, well, genuine, genuinely yourself and uh, and Rosie, but like for John's character, the I wanted that feeling of again otherworldliness where he doesn't do anything over the top that makes you kind of go, oh, it's one of those characters. It's just, I think, I like to think of it right at that level where it's, it, there's something unnatural about it while at the same time not making a thing of the fact that it's unnatural, if you want to call it that. Um, but yeah, I know yourself and Rosie did a really great job. Good. And John, what did you whisper in those moments when you had to whisper something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just kid, I'm just kidding it's a <laughs> well like that's um i'll tell you what i won't I'm like i I won't, I won't say what he says but it, that's my martyrs moment if you ever saw the movie martyrs i, I think i have French film. okay well there's a moment in that towards the end where something is whispered and it has a profound effect on a character you'd have to watch it and i don't want to give away what happens but that's my nod to that moment he says something to jimmy to Cyril that completely demolishes his character and that's that's what you're left wondering what did he say to this hardened guy to suddenly make him fall apart um yeah and I wanted to kind of that for me it was a really kind of cool way to convey in a small space of time his power that this tough guy sitting on the bench who's just told uh, Mike and his whole team that they're going to you know Basically, that he's in, he, he's shown them that he's in charge, but then this quiet character comes along, doesn't say anything really, whispers one thing in his ear, and your man starts to cry. And that's, yeah, yeah, I thought it was really cool. very, very profound. Um, well, let's see. So, Gateway is streaming now on multiple platforms. I understand it's coming to Shutter soon, which will be awesome. You'll get a hopefully, hopefully, uh, see now there. I Some meant to do a soon. thumbs up. Yeah. We discovered. Yeah. We discovered that Zoom, like it does. Well, now it's not doing it. There it is. See. Oh. oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. We can't. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, what happens if you flip the bird? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, here. Try it. <laughs> I know if I do that, like. Okay. See now nothing. Oh, oh whatever. Okay, okay. Oh yeah. See then it rains, right? <laughs> Jesus fun, Christ. Fun with Zoom, right? Um, <laughs> gosh, what was my question? Uh, I, I guess, um, okay, so Ben and I both really enjoyed the film. What would you say to folks who haven't seen it yet to um, get them to want to watch? How would you plug it? Um, well, I guess if you like, if you're a fan of, let's say, for example, Ben Wheatley stuff, uh, who did uh, Ben Wheatley, The Kill List, and... and um, yes, um, awesome. God, my... I'm so, why am I suddenly blanking? Don't Paris. Like he's a great, he's a great, um, he's a great director and he makes stuff that has ominous kind of like pagan, almost rich, you know, witchcraftian vibes mixed with very real world kind of characters, which is, bit, you know, big inspiration for Gateway along with uh, Shane Meadows. Um, but if you, if you like, I, I guess if you like psychological horror, then like, if you like The Shining, I like, I like it to The Shining, kind of love, hate me to The Shining. You know, where it's not, it's not a gore fest. It was never going to be a gore fest because that wasn't what I wanted to make. Um, this was what I wanted to make because I love stories where it starts going one way and then it pivots. And I just love that pivot because you're kind of like, okay, where am I going now? And I think that's kind of, that's one of the beauties of storytelling is you can take people on a journey and they don't need to know where they're going to end up. You know, you just get on board with it. And that's what I wanted to do with uh, Gateway. Um, also, just in regards to watching the film, it's not so much watching, I think it is listening to it. I often tell people maybe to, to with, um, you know, even in cocoon yourself in whatever way, either in a room with a sound system or headphones, earphones, because yeah. um, I think you can just really, it, there are elements where, you know, th their pacing is slow at times to bring you through. But the thing is, while you're there, if you're actually listening properly, it's not there's little things going on yeah. all the time yeah. and you suddenly are just you get enraptured uh, through the sound alone i think uh, as you go through the film yeah that's called tony langlois who did our score and aaron fay who did the sound design like, they did a really good job 
And the thing mm. is, it's the sound for me was um, was vital. Like I didn't want music in a classic sense. Um, and I want what the kind of direction I gave Tony, which was wasn't always was, wasn't deliberately vague. But at the same time, it wasn't easy for him because it's hard to put a finger on. This is what it's going to be. So he's kind of he has to kind of conceptualize what I'm relating to him. Um, and then with Darren, I think Aaron at first kind of he wasn't sure what I was doing because I was taking it out. I was taking out a lot of sound um, from the film. But then it kind of he realized that I had a plan. Um, you know, you could see where it was going, and yeah, he like they both did a, a superb job because it's a huge part of the film, the score yeah. and sound design. You know? It's kind of like a, I want to say like, kind of like a a rumble sort of that's getting a little bit more intense, and you're yeah. waiting for it to, yeah. which was pretty good. I, I I said to Aaron, I thought it was kind of like it reminded me in the way of the thing, yes, the claustrophobic mm. air and. Where it was just like the same sort of note going, but it kind of was getting like it was gonna. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. I enjoyed that. We we approached it from myself and Tony approached it from an organic point of view, whereby we wanted the sound to feel like it was almost emanating from a living thing, you know. Um, so that way it was kind of there was if you know if you turn it up really loud, you can actually hear those whispers and different things that you hear. Yeah. But they're at a kind of like at a base level. They're there, but they're really subtle you know um and we we also liked the idea of the the house and the gateway being uh, essentially like a black hole and these guys have already crossed the event horizon and they're going to the center and so it's building as they're getting closer and closer and closer to that you know that moment you know cool well i did have a question about the end but i won't because if any, no one's seen it i think it would ruin it so We'll have to ask you after the video, but it was just, Kaiser uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe it's the way you filmed it to leave you with asking your own sort of what you yes. think it was. Right. That yeah. was always the, I never wanted to answer in my head as a storyteller, like as a writer, there are questions I want to ask the audience and I want, there are questions I want the audience to ask, but yeah, there were questions that I don't want to ask because I don't, it's not about the answer. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, why is it there? That's not important. It is. Do you know what I mean? Um, like if, if I was going to get into the mythology of it, then obviously that becomes an important question, but we're never, we are on the journey of the characters. So we have as much information as they have, you know, <clears throat> you kind of, we stay on that level playing field where we're, we're in the same place as them. And sometimes we're maybe a little ahead but they never know as we all like like the characters. We only know as much as they know about it, yeah. and I kind of I wanted it that way. Well, I'd say if you've left people thinking about the movie after they've watched it, you've done a pretty excellent Thank job you. with it. So well done with that. Thank you. Yes. That was, Thank that you. was the goal uh, to you know, to achieve it. Yeah, your film definitely stays with you for days. So that well done. Um, Thank you. So I, I have a question too. Um, this, I, I guess, is a psychological, maybe elements of a haunted house type horror film. Um, and you're all very talented. I would love to see you do more. And I guess my question is, um, if you were to work together again, what other subgenre of horror would you like to explore? If you had full full reins to do whatever you want. Full reins. Well, my seven jerk, well, I have a project at the moment that I've, a script I've written that I'm hoping to shoot. Um, it's called Rebirth. And we're going to okay. hope, my, hopefully myself and Joe will do that and we'll shoot it in uh, West Cork Studios, which is a new studio in West Cork. It's a great location. And I wrote it specifically for there, but it's a complete polar opposite to Gateway. You know, it's more of a, almost a creature feature, if you want to call it that, um, with kind of body horror elements to it. Um, but so it's a, it's a, a tonal shift away from Gateway. Like I'd love to come back to the Gateway story, like a, like the, the follow-up, if I was to do a sequel to Gateway, the sequel would actually be about John's character, you know, mm. uh, and what he does. Going. And it would be a different type of, it would be yeah. more Cron Cronenberg than Kubrick. So the first one was Kubrick, the second one would be more Cronenberg, and then the third part would be more freaking, if I ever got to do the Gateway trilogy. But the next one is, uh, well, I hope is Rebirth, and we'd shoot that in West Cork Studios, and it's a very different type of movie. Wow, exciting. Yeah. Keep us updated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to get money. <laughs> That's uh, the hard part. Yes. Yes. That's the hard part. That does play a factor. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess John and, and Jer, what are there any horror subgenres that you would like to be a part of that you haven't already? 
Um, I, like I'd love to do a vampire, a good, a really good vampire film. And I know Niall has a, a vampire script as well. I do. Yeah, it should be more of awesome. it. Let's hope it Probably. happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's all it's all ifs and wins. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Ifs and wins. Yeah, and uh, you're gonna hate me. I'm I'm not the I'm not the biggest horror person in the world. I'd probably like to make perfume ads, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Wh- okay. Which Fair which enough. are certain which are a certain horror to other people. I know. Yeah, so. this is a scary one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> make a scary perfume ad. Um, yeah, there you go. Get Nicholas right. Wendy to direct it. And you yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. No, I, I think uh, going back to what we were saying earlier on, the magic realism is a thing I really love, uh, especially maybe towards Italian horror previously. Uh, so I like uh, those uh, Argento moments and something like that where the camera's very strong in what it's doing, but you pick up things. Like you might go down a hallway and flick past someone's face, but you know it's done so beautifully that it's not, oh, there, stop, look. It's all the stories drifting on the whole time. So I guess I'd love to, that psychological kind of thriller element going towards that in with the magic realism. That's slightly, we're in this real world, but just slightly off. Cool, cool. Um, well, I'll say, if any way of that word, magic realism, and you, well, if you haven't heard it, this is where you heard it first, because I think that's a great. Yeah. It's yeah. So- well, I, I, did, I, I did not invent it. <laughs> oh, you didn't? No, uh, it's a. But you're spot on in your usage. It, it, it's a subject. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just uh, for me. I know I like images, obviously. So I I spend a lot of things. So, I uh, realism is something I quite like in art. And then it's the realism is one thing, but as in when you get to it and you go slightly off and then I've delved into worlds like there's neorealism. It's just uh, if you want to look it up, there's some fantastic, especially Italian. Um, painters and uh, filmmakers so and if you want there's some beautiful stuff out there yeah cool wicked let's uh yeah awesome i agree let's hey ben why don't we do the this or that quickly you want to yeah give, do that? before can, can i just really quick can i give a quick shout out to my lead uh timmy creed oh please. yes please because yeah. i only because I, I i like i'm one of these people i want to name everybody because everyone was well and like genuinely was so great and i hate kind of like not mentioning folks, but like Timmy Creed or Kevin Barry or Lawrence um, and Fiona Hardy, George Hanover, Aidan O'Hare. Like they were all, the actors were so good to work with and they were just, they were so talented. Um, and I kind of, I always feel bad that I don't get a chance to men- mention everybody. Um, and I think one of the things that really kind of helped this film along was their performances and how good they are. Um, so yeah. And Timmy, like Timmy, Timmy, he's the, the he's the core of the whole thing, and he does such a great job mm-hmm. in yeah. in bringing us on that journey with him. Um, and yeah, I'm indebted to, and the same with the crew. Like I'm indebted to all of them. And uh, the stunts, Brendan Condren, who came down and did our stunts, and Martin Lewandowski, who did our stills. Um, yeah, just great, great people. Yeah, I'll just say at this time what you were saying. I just wanted you were saying earlier on about the cinematographer for me being uh, there was someone who had Porig. Uh, Porig came in and shot some stuff for us, especially operating wise. Some of the movement bits. Um, I know my skills and certain skills I don't have, and this man has unreal skills with handheld stuff. So we brought him in. He also shot one or two things, so he was fantastic. And just our colorist. To us, oh, post production yeah. is so important. The post production is my favorite part. And our colors, Paul, uh, when we we're in London, is just fantastic. He he just really helped us, you know, sand it down to get that story really sharp in the end for us. Yeah, yeah, and part and we to be honest with you, the days when we had Park on set with us, yeah. they were so much easier because Jerk yeah. and Light Park would shoot, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's a, yeah. I mean, like again, as I said, there's there's so many folks that I, I want to thank and I want to mention, and I just yeah, like you kind of you yeah. I'm grateful to them. Well, if you want to do a future video with even more people, or maybe even a watch party at some point. Hey, um, that'd be amazing. I'd love could, that. Uh, maybe we could facilitate and host that. That would be very cool, actually. Oh, that'd be, yeah. Thinking 100%. on the spot here. <laughs> no, no, okay. I'm done with that. No, yeah, I'm... let's uh, let's talk after, after this. Um, let's see. So this or that. It's, we've never done this with more than one person, so we're going to see how it goes. So basically throw out two things. You pick one or the other. Don't have to overthink it or, or anything like that. So hopefully this will be fun. Um, first one is possession or a serial killer film. Possession. Serial killer. Possession, serial killer. John, what do you think? I could serial killer. Yeah. Serial killer. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ben, do you want? We can do two and two. I'll do the next one. 
keep going. Um, I can't find them. <laughs> go ahead, Ben. You can do it. I can't keep going. I can't. Oh, you find can't them. find them. Okay. Uh, watch on the big screen or watch at home. Big screen. Big screen. Big screen if the audience is quiet. <laughs> Although some movies, if the audience is involved, like Terrifier, I don't know. Well, is it just not on the phone and stuff like that? Yeah. I think yeah. Ta or John's talking about folks who are chatting about the weather while you're trying to watch the weather. You know what I mean? <laughs> or if they answer their phone, how's that? Yeah. That's always uh, yeah. enjoyable. No. Um, I'll may have. They get a <laughs> stare. <laughs> yes. All right, Ben, over to uh, you. Return of the Living Dead or Shaun of the Dead? Return. 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 Yeah, return. Okay. No. Ben, there you want to do the next one? We'll just do it in twos. Yeah, I can, I can do it. Um, werewolves or vampires? Werewolves. Vampire. 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 Oh, an American Werewolf in London, one of the best movies ever oh, made. Oh, so it's good. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like I love vampires, but just just something that there's never been a vampire movie that hit the levels of America Where for London in my head anyway. No, you're right. That's a good point. With all like the horror, the comedy, the love story, just, I mean, there's so much going on there. Like, like think of it. Like how funny the movie is, but at the same time, it's it's scary as as hell. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And to yep. hit that so perfectly, ah, what a what a what a absolutely, movie. absolutely. Check it out in 4K if you haven't. It looks great. There you go. The uh, jaws of the canine world. Yes, yes. <laughs> great observation. Uh, let's see over to me. Novels or collections of short stories? Novels. I'm Novels. actually going to say short stories. Got with two. What did you say? Novels. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Moving right along. Pennywise or Art the Clown? Oh, Pennywise. Pennywise. I have no answer to that. I have no idea. <laughs> he doesn't know who we do the buy. Pennywise is Stephen King here from it. Okay. I, I, I can't comment since I haven't seen them. So Okay, okay. All right, Ben, you can take the next two. Yeah, uh Friday the first <laughs> or Nightmare on Elm Street. What was the first one? Friday the thirteenth. Oh. No, I'm going to go nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. But are we talking the original Friday the Thirteenth or the sequels? Are we Jason? Or are we the more mother? like the franchise? Uh, I don't know. I would say franchise. franchise. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, As a whole. I gotta go. I gotta go, Jason. I gotta go Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, what did you say, John? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Franchise as the franchise, Friday the Thirteenth overall franchise. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd go with yeah. that too. But I do love both. Yeah. I do. Um, Robert yeah. Ogden did so good. Uh, <laughs> Ben, over to you for the next one. Hey, hit me only again. Got a few more. Uh, hey, uh, physical or streaming media? Physical. Physical. Wicked. Um, yeah, right answer. <laughs> no, uh, I, I wonder, uh, in, can you break that down a bit more for me in regards to what you mean by physical? Um, like streaming movies or yeah. you like the thought of collecting I the like, physical yeah. copies more. Yeah, no, I have to say, obviously, I've I've lots of films and stuff, and I've lots of collections and things throughout the past. But the one thing with streaming, what I think is fantastic, is it, it suddenly gives you a pattern where you can hip hop between things on a certain day or a certain evening. So I just always appreciate being able to do that at certain times. Yeah. But like then, then again, I'd like big prints on up uh, projectors and things like that. So even having hard copies is what I love. But I just. I think it's amazing the way it's changed for so many people to be able to watch so many different things and interact with different things. So both. That's a good answer. amazing when you've got a hangover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's for sure. Um, okay, two more. Uh, David Lynch or David Cronenberg? David Lynch. That's really tough. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go Lynch because of the elephant man. Yeah. Movie. Um, I don't know. I'm... I think I'll go Cronenberg because Lynch is a bit too much. But for me, the outside realism of like Cronenberg, it, it's just always there in the background. That kind of creepiness or that kind of uh, grime almost to people. That's a really tough one. Yeah, because you yes. look at the fly and video drone yeah. and you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a tough one. The Battle of the Davids. Of course, right? That's that's why we did that. And then lastly, <laughs> we always ask this one, Halloween 1978 or Jaws, the original Jaws? That's a tough one for me. 
<laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> it's got to be. It's clearly. It's clearly Halloween. <laughs> yeah, no, I just go. I just go Jaws because the lads would seem embarrassed if I didn't say it with their <laughs> posters out and everything. It's the fucking best movie ever made. What are you talking okay. about? <laughs> it is the best. Okay, okay. Even Tarantino. Tarantino <laughs> said it's not his favorite movie, but it's the best movie ever made. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Awesome. Um, John? Jaws. 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 Oh, Jaws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good man, John. Hmm. One of these <laughs> times, someone will pick Halloween. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a massive. Con- I'm actually massively conflicted by that one because Halloween is like the serial killer of Jaws. Then, but like Halloween's an amazing movie, much like Jaws in terms of, of the, the like one of the things about Jaws that people always talk about is that the shark shark didn't work, and so Spielberg had to you know figure out ways to make the story great, which he did. But Carpenter had issues too with Halloween and he the vision and the creativity that was on show making that movie not to mention the fact that like there's no film like Jaws is about a shark which is great because it's you know we know what Mm -hmm. sharks are but Michael Myers no you know Michael Myers is just one of the best cinematic creations of all time you know yes yes and I gotta I gotta ask you I'll ask you at some point about David Gordon's green David Gordon Green's trilogy i want to ask you now but at some point what you thought of those ones i loved it uh, i didn't mind that yeah. i thought i didn't mind that i just thought it was a different type yeah yeah i had serious issues with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of people there i just kind of t- took it as what it was narratively it made like the, across the mm. three movies i was like well, i don't understand jamie lee curtis's uh her progression makes no sense. It didn't make but, sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it seems, a lot of films out. But we'll have you, we'll have you back. Yeah. We'll have you back on <laughs> and we can talk about the Halloween films. Yeah. I'd love yeah. that. So the, I want, I must say the reason why we put Halloween and Jaws together at the end, because the first Halloween is my favorite movie and Jaws is Ben's favorite movie. So they don't really go the together. Two outstanding but... choices. Exactly. All right. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you for all yeah, of you for you. joining us. Um, if you haven't seen Gateway, Check it out. It's one to see, and hopefully it'll be on Shutter soon, but it is streaming on multiple platforms now. Um, so check it out, Gateway. Uh, ben, over to you. Do you want to do the closing? Yeah. Um, thank you to all three of you for coming on. Um, I would say definitely go and watch Gateway. It is a slow-burning, intense, claustrophobic film that is drip feed you to the point where I'd say you actually get annoyed because you want to know more quicker which <laughs> i did love so <laughs> congrats on that and um yeah as i said thank you for coming on Let go to thank instagram you. follow us over on there at a and b horror movies and thank you if you are following us already thank awesome. you thank you thank you very much thank you